years, and so many of us in this room who are not privileged to be growing up in his shul came across the rub through that mode. And among the lay leaders who helped to establish and found uh, the Yeshiva High School is Dr. Lee Spetner, and it's a combo to call it Dr. Spetner at this time. What is a successful life? The Rabboni Shalom endows each person with a unique set of capabilities and charges him with using those capabilities to achieve a tikkun in the world, a tikkun that is unique to him. The measure of a successful life is the extent to which one exploits his capabilities to achieve his tikkun. The greater one's endowed capabilities, the greater is one's challenge. Harab Kedalia ben Zeva Cohen Einemer was endowed with outstanding capabilities. He had a penetrating and brilliant mind. He was a powerful speaker. He had vision. He had tenacity. He fully accepted his role as a soldier of Hashem. He met his own personal challenge and triumphed. He used his abilities to the fullest in answering his challenge, which turned out to be the building of Torah in Washington, D.C. He came to Washington as a young man of 26 years with the other young smicha. He was chosen as the rabbi of Israel Shomri Amuna because of his outstanding Torah credentials. When he came, the shul and its balabatim were young. The shul had factions and had its share of disagreements. There were about half a dozen musmachim among the balabatim. And when one would offer a psak one way, another would offer a psak otherwise. There was some measure of disunity. Rabbi Enoch was chosen in large part because he could bring unity to the shul. As a Talmud Chacham, he was head and shoulders above everyone in the shul. When he made a halakhic decision, no one could dare question him. With his stature, strength, and tenacity, he guided the shul in the path of Torah for more than five decades. His Torah stature was recognized beyond the shul. Rabbi Levinson, the dean of the Washington rabbinate in the 50s, chose only young Rabbi Enemar to assist him in Gideon. He was soon recognized as a halakhic authority in the greater Washington area. He brought stature to young Israel Shomri Muna. The shul grew as he grew. He was fearless in his devotion to Torah and halakha. His leadership raised the shul from being a midget among the large shuls of the city to where Shomri Amuna today is the largest and most influential shul in the area. And he became the foremost rabbinical authority in the greater Washington area. When the neighborhood of the shul was changing in the 50s and 60s, and members began to move away, it became clear that the shul would have to move. But the question was where? There were disagreements about where to move. Some chose an area and moved, but no one followed. A consensus was hard to achieve. Rabbi Einemer then took it upon himself to make the decision and move the shul. He bought a house in an area of Silver Spring that later proved to be the right choice. 
He announced that the shul would meet in his house until a building could be built. His initiative proved to be the catalyst needed to move the shul. For a time he was blessed, or perhaps saddled, with two shuls, more than six miles apart. He alternated between the shuls. His round trip walk on Shabbos to the old shul was about 13 miles, and he did it willingly. But his success in leading the shul was not enough for Rabbi Amun. He felt he could and should do more for Torah. So he went on to build Yeshiva High School, which answered a desperate need in Washington. The high school, which was to be two schools, started with only six girls. From that small, inauspicious beginning, the two schools had grown to about 250 students. <coughs> high academic standards in both Torah and secular studies. The school has an enviable reputation countrywide. But Rabbi Ainer was not to rest on his laurels. He felt the Torah in Washington must continue to grow. He went on to lead the establishment of Yeshiva Gedola and later a Kohel. He established high standards in these institutions as he did in a high school and in the shul. He produced many students, as was evidenced by the large number of young Bahurim who were present at his Levaya here on a fr late Friday afternoon. Looking back at Rabbi Einer's accomplishments, it may appear to have been easy, but it was not easy. He had to encounter opposition and overcome many obstacles. Some obstacles were natural, and some were deliberately placed in his path. But he forged ahead until he succeeded. Rabbi Einemer in his productive lifetime truly made a difference in Washington and in the world. Because of his efforts of leadership, Washington and the half century of Rabbi Einemer's watch transformed into a Makam Torah. The Jewish landscape of Washington will for many years bear the imprint of Rav Gadalia ben Seva Cohen. His life was indeed a resounding success. He met and overcame his challenges using all the powers at his disposal to build Torah in Washington and the world. He truly made his Tikkun Olam. Our sages tell us that there is a parallel between Yom Kippur and the death of Tzadikim. Just as Yom Kippur is an Esrat song for Kapara, for Am Yisrael, so the death of Tzadik is an Esrat song of Kapara for us if we adopt the lessons he has taught us with his life. May Rab Gedalia ben Zeva Cohen be a male for us, his Balabatya and his students. And may we have the schus of achieving through his teachings to Shuvah Shlema that can lead us to the Gehula Shlema in the Rabbi Amen.